Thanks. Um, my name is Ann Lawless. I'm the chair of the select board and downstairs in the office with Vanessa. Uh, Jim Blackbird, uh, my fellow select board member, is here, and we're hoping that um, Mike Richardson will also be joining us from the top of the mountain. And let's see. Um, Peter, do you want me to go over sort of the rules of how you want how people should speak, or would you, or would you like sure, to? Do why that? don't you Why don't you do it? Okay. Um, for the minutes, we we are asking that people state your name when you're recognized to speak, because not everyone can see your name on the um, on your little video screen. If there, you know, if people who are on the phone can't see that. Um, and we ask if somebody wants to wants to say something about one of the articles, um, yeah, please indicate. And Peter will call on you with Vanessa's help. And then um, please, if you want to speak again, please wait until the all the others have had a chance to speak. And um, Peter will recognize each person. And we're hoping that you can limit your remarks to one minute. And maybe that won't be a problem because we have a very small crowd. Um, and we're really hoping that everyone will have a chance to, to speak. And um, it's not really a debate. People have a chance to express their opinion on each article when they, when they vote. Right. We're, we're not going to have any uh, motions other than to adjourn. Uh, and uh, that's uh, other than that, there are no motions. Uh, when we get to the warning, uh, there are no modifications to the warning. Uh, there's no mechanism to do that. Uh, uh, the mechanism is uh, when we vote on uh, town meeting day by Australian ballot. Uh, anything else, Anne? Not, not for me. I think I'm ready to. I'm ready for us to start. Um, so, uh, okay. I'd like to recognize uh, our uh, representatives uh, and uh, have them speak, if that's all right with the assembly. Yes. If it isn't, if it isn't, let me know. You want to go first, Vicky? Hearing nothing. Okay, yes. Vicky. Uh, go ahead. I'm glad to go first, but Catherine didn't know if you had children issues at dinner time. Why don't you go in case you have to pop up? <laughs> sure. Thanks. It is it is dinner time, and I've got a two and a four year old, but uh, grateful for my husband uh, and, and enjoying a moment with you all uh, away from them. <laughs> and um, yeah, excited to be here with you all. I certainly wish that we could all be gathered together in person, but this seems like a good a good second. Um, so I'm Representative Catherine Sims, and um, hard to believe it, but we are already like halfway through the 2022 <laughs> legislative session. Um, I've been uh, busy in my first term as a legislator. I'm serving on House Energy and Technology and also as the clerk of the Rural Caucus. And, you know, we are in the middle of a really transformative biennium here with um, significant federal stimulus and an increase in state revenues so that we have this, you know, kind of once in a lifetime opportunity to make transformational investments in the future of Vermont. And we've already been pretty busy this session. And so I just wanted to, uh, you know, share a, a couple of highlights um, and, you know, happy to take um, questions or have, uh, you know, more detailed offline conversation with anyone who's interested. Um, so some, you know, big things that we've done already um, include allocating $50 million for more mixed rate and multifamily and emergency housing units. Um, we know that we are really in the middle of a housing crisis, and um, hopefully this will, you know, create more, more net new units um, that can serve uh, Vermonters. We are also continuing to invest in broadband. In addition to the 150 million that we allocated last year, we are allocating an additional 95 million to, you know, with the goal of serving um, every corner of the state with a focus on unserved and underserved communities. 
We've continued to make investments in um, paying down our pension liability. So we're um, allocating an additional 50 million to help address that um, significant in, uh, liability in a way that's fair to teachers and state employees and our taxpayers, bringing our total one-time investments um, in the state pension fund um, to $200 million. Um, our committee, uh, Energy and Technology, has been looking at a proposal um, to expand cell phone uh, service throughout Vermont, and we're recommending a $21 million investment to build towers throughout Vermont with a focus on, again, unserved areas, knowing how important connectivity is and how our region really lacks behind. And um, our transportation fund, um, it will also be doing transformative investments um, thanks to the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. We have over $2 billion in federal funding to improve roads and bridges and public transportation and infrastructure, which is you know, especially important in the face of climate change and the escalating extreme weather events that we're all experiencing. Um, one thing that I'll just touch on briefly, and, and Vicki may elaborate on because this is in her committee, but um, I spent a lot of time this summer and fall with the Rural Caucus um, learning about the forest economy. We visited um, sites all across the state to hear from loggers and landowners and foresters about the challenges and opportunities in our forest economy. And that led to the first ever rural omnibus bill. And a major piece of that bill, the Forest Future Strategic Roadmap, has passed out of House Energy and Technology and um, modeled after the successful Farm to Plate initiative um, from a number of years ago, this uh, Forest Future Strategic Roadmap looks at bringing all the stakeholders together with the Department of Forest Parts and Rec to identify um, how we as a state can make uh, investments and policy changes to really transform the future of our forest economy, recognizing um, that so much depends upon it. Um, lastly, I'll just flag that we are in the middle of redistricting um, every 10 years and we have new census data. Um, we uh, look at the House and Senate districts and adjust them to make sure that uh, every Vermonter has equal representation. And so the current draft uh, that House Government Operations is working on does actually recommend some significant changes for our district, which is currently a two member district representing seven towns, Albany, Barton, Craftsbury, Greensboro, Glover, Sheffield and Wheelock. And the um, proposal is to divide that district up into two new single member districts and that Sheffield and Wheelock would join a two member district with Linden and some of the surrounding towns. And so we're, you know, um, in the final stages of that and happy to talk more with folks if there are questions about that. But um, it's a real honor and privilege to serve uh, and, and represent you all in Montpelier and bring that, you know, rural voice uh, to, to the table. And um, I will drop in the chat a link to a more detailed town meeting report that I put together um, since I'm not there to hand it out in person, but happy to answer any questions. And if folks don't already know, I'm, I'm hosting monthly office hours every month. So if anyone's interested in uh, more detailed conversation, ha happy to connect through that as well. I'll stop there. Thanks. Uh, does anyone have comments or uh, questions for Representative Sims? Looks like Toon maybe and Greg have something. You're muted, Toon. Yeah, sorry, I was trying to raise my hand in the bottom part and trying mm -hmm. to unmute and all at the same time. I just want to thank you, Catherine, for uh, really putting out a lot of information. Um, I don't, I don't think I've ever communicated with you, but I appreciate that you put things on Front Porch Forum and just I, I'm constantly seeing notices from you, and I appreciate that. So thanks. Great, thanks. Glad, glad to hear that they're helpful. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, yes, Catherine. You're muted also. Thank okay. you. Can you hear? Yeah. Yeah, hi, I'm new. Um, and my husband and I, We've been here for uh, um, about eight months. So we live on LaRue Road, um, uh, 347 LaRue. I can't think tonight, but um, it's all that snow, I guess. But yeah, I just want to introduce myself. I'm glad to be here and see people and hear um, what people have to say. I mean, there's a couple concerns that I have. Um, since living here and 
uh, there's two on my mind um, that I'm wondering, and I know I'm new, and I've heard that Vermont is this way, and I know that um, <clears throat> some comments that they don't want to change the culturalness of uh, these towns, but um, it's it, the one thing that that I have concerns about is the South Wheelock Road. And it's just, I don't know if this is part of this community forum talking about a road or roads, but um, I found it really crazy with the mud and how poor they are maintained. Um, and you have to kind of catch a certain part of the day to have it be rideable. The other day I had to turn around because I didn't want to get stuck. I don't have a car. I mean, I don't have a truck. I have a Subaru. But, you know, oh, and I know bathroom. some of the back, and I just want to finish. I know some of the back roads too. I've been driving around. I've been in quite a few dirt roads because I know that they're here in Vermont throughout the whole state. But I never saw them as maintained the way they are here. I mean, um, I was over by, uh, what is it, Breezy Road. I went down to Dog Mountain, and there were hardly any ruts in the road, a few here and there, but they were very different. And maybe the economics are different, and they're taken care of differently, but I think that's St. Johnsbury Center. Uh, which is not as affluent as other parts of St. Johnsbury, and I might be wrong, but it was just a, a concern um, because I find it hazardous, you know? I mean, you could get stuck, you could roll off the end, um, and we're longtime Alaskans. You know, we've been, I've been there over 17 years, and we are used to driving on snow-covered roads, but this you know, takes the cake, you know, and um, so that's my main concern. And I know the, the, my second one is the internet and that's supposed to be taken care of within, I don't know how many years that we'll get good service, but you know, we have via, via sat now and it's expensive and it's spotty. So um, those are my two main concerns. Otherwise it's been fine. You know, I'm adapting and I'm a, good adapter and uh, i've got a great garden so and i hope to expand it and keep on biking <laughs> that's it thank you catherine anybody else have a comment for Rep representative sims I can just quickly answer that. I'll leave the road thing to you all, but um, uh, you know, as a, as a local issue. But you know, around the broadband um, and and connectivity, um, our our region you know, has fallen behind in terms of connectivity rates, and um, we have been focused over the last few years to make significant investments in broadband, and um, that is all happening through the Northeast Kingdom Communication Union District, the CUD, which. Um, nearly every member in the Northeast Kingdom or every town in the Northeast Kingdom is, is now a part of. And the goal is to reach all unserved and underserved addresses, which is nearly 3,000 miles of fiber to build. And so um, the the resources are there. The CUD has been applying and receiving grants through our state um, in, in investments in broadband. And the expectation is within five to seven years, um, we'll be able to serve the, the entire region. And I know that that can, for folks who aren't connected now, feel really frustratingly slow. Um, but we are, you know, limited by, um, you know, workforce challenges and just also the pace at which one can lay the, the fiber and string the poles and, and get folks connected. But uh, we are moving forward full steam ahead to address that really important uh, issue of connectivity um, for every corner of the state. Great, thank you. Oh, anyone else? Okay, I guess I don't see anyone else, so we'll go right along to Vicki Strong, our other representative. Thank you so much, Peter and Anne, and it's nice to be with you, and um, nice to see you. And as, as Catherine mentioned about redistricting, I've served 
in this uh, district for 12 years and enjoyed it and um, really enjoyed getting to know a lot of you. And as the future goes forward, you may very likely have new representatives. So I just want to say how much I've enjoyed knowing you and being a part of your lives in, in somewhat a distance way, since I live in Albany. So I um, have served on agriculture and forestry for, for four years now. And I just want to just say that we've been working hard to get a budget ready. Catherine mentioned it's budget time. We proposed part of the budget to Appropriations Committee, and, and many things are on our minds in, in ag and forestry in the state of Vermont. As we think about dairy farms in particular, which seems to have been the landscape of our state for, for generations, many, many have closed and had to close over the last 10 years. So we're now under 600 dairy farms total. But in that change, cultural change and economic change, many other farms are starting up and many new agricultural um, opportunities are happening through uh, on-farm businesses. So we're seeing diversity happen. We're seeing uh, sales of farms, but other farmers going in together and, and forming new types of farming here in Vermont. And we're working in our committee to make sure that our, our ag agricultural diversity stays vibrant. And that involves a lot of different um, funding and types of help, but we've been working hard to help uh, as we go into the future on all those things to keep our landscape and tourism vi vital and also the quality of food. We've been studying the, our food systems throughout New England and six states in particular, New England, feeding New England has been working hard to try to see how much of our actual food consumption, particularly here in Vermont, is local or, or produced in the state. And as of right now, I'm sorry to say it's 25%. Uh, and they've worked hard to get it up to that. And we're hoping over the next few years to keep bringing that up so that not only for safety reasons, if we have storms or other issues in our, in our country, but we can provide more and more good local quality food. Uh, let's see, we've been studying insecticides and pesticides pretty heavily this year, having to do with how it gets in our water, in our soil, how it affects our pollinators. And overall, these studies are leading us to try to do more work about cutting th those um, chemicals down. And right now, our farmers who do plant corn plant up to 100,000 acres of corn in our state every year. And those most of those seeds are treated with neonicotinoids. And it does help in the long run to help corn grow well but it does have long-term effects on pollinators, uh, which are bees and insects and things of that nature. So we're working on a bill this year to continue to study this, this topic and try to help where pollinators are dying in quite a big numbers across the state. Um, one thing I wanna mention, which is really my love in my committee is our state parks and in the forestry section of our, our, our duties and our work. We talk a lot about not only forestry and forest products, but the recreation aspect of our forest, our forests across the state. And maybe some of you know, but I didn't actually know that we have 55 wonderful little state parks across the state. And right here, even in our own Northeast Kingdom, there's 12. There's 12 state parks that we can be visiting and getting to know for all kinds of things like hiking, outdoor recreation, mountain climbing, camping and all those things we enjoy as Vermonters. So I'm just putting out a little uh, a little tidbit that maybe uh, over these next few years, you can venture out and visit some of these wonderful state parks. And as I end, I just wanna mention what Catherine touched on, the hard work that went into a bill that just came out of our Ag and Forestry Committee. And, and I wanna just give a shout out to Catherine because she organized all summer long when most of us are trying to plant gardens and, and relax a little, she, she really did organize a lot of um, wood tours, I guess you'd call those. And we toured and Catherine led and other legislators led many of these tours across the state to really visit the forest economy, the forest industry. What are the gaps happening? Why are we seeing uh, sawmills closing? Uh, even in terms of pellet mills, all these different aspects 
of, of uh, forestry have been looked at. And through the work of, of uh, uh, Representative Sims and others, they came up with this bill that did pass out of our committee. And it really is going to bring together the forest industry, forest parks and recreation, and the Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund to find a path forward to really fill these gaps and find the roadblocks and challenges to our forest industry. So I, I have, there's a lot of enthusiasm for this and a lot of momentum. I think we're gonna see it pass uh, throughout the House and the Senate. And I think it will do great things over the next few years for our state. So we're in a good place in Vermont where we live, where we're surrounded by wonderful nature and the businesses and the farms and communities that make this a wonderful place to live. And it's my hope that we'll continue to see that and see it thrive as the generations continue. And if you have questions or thoughts, please always feel free to contact me. Uh, my home phone number's in the book and email is, is a legislative email. I'm always happy to visit with constituents. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Vicki. We really appreciate your work on our, our behalf. Uh, does anyone have any comments to ask uh, questions or comments for Vicki? Yeah, yeah, pick run for something. No. There. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. I just wanted to say thanks to Vicki for that update. That was great. Nice to hear. Thank you, too. <laughs> Eileen, are you raising your hand? Okay. No, I was just giving a thumbs up, thanking Toon okay. for that, and thanking Vicki for her service. Yes. Sorry, I'm new to this hand raising stuff, so. Yes, I see a hand, Anne. I would just like to um, welcome Mike Richardson, our newest select board member. He's on video under the name Aaron, but it's really, it's really Mike. Hi, Mike. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I was uh, about 10 inches of snow on the mountain, so uh, I was just taking a break from plowing snow and uh, thought I'd join this way. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I got my special helper here. Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you to our legislators. Peter, do you want to help us move along and um, start? Um, I, I think the, uh, the next thing would be to go to the articles. Is that correct, Ann? I think so. Okay. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Getting our road cloud here. <laughs> yes, Linda. You're muted, Linda. I was just go. goodbye. <laughs> Okay, so um, we can't, we'll start with Article 1 to elect all town officers required by law, and we really can't nominate anyone, uh, and this year people have uh, had to officially file for being a candidate. Uh, 
as opposed to being elected from the floor, uh, sort of the corollary or the option to nominating from the floor is to uh, request uh, abs uh, uh, write-in uh, votes. So people, if they want to uh, be elected uh, and they're not an official candidate, they can uh, request uh, that people vote uh, a write-in. Some of the uh, uh, some of the offices that we have, they're really I understand there aren't any candidates uh, that are officially filed, and uh, that's either they weren't interested in the job or uh, they didn't get the message, I'm not sure, but they can still be voted in if they uh, ha have a write-in uh, situation. Yes. Peter, if you'd like, I can run down um, the offices and the names that appear on the ballot if you'd like. Okay, sounds like a good idea. Okay, so um, for moderator one year term, the name we have the name of Peter Miller on the ballot. Um, select board three year term, we have Ann Lawless on the ballot, um, but we also have a candidate um, who is running as a write in, who is Andy Butu from Minister Hill. Select board for the one year term to finish out a three year term, we have Mike Richardson on the ballot. Uh, Lister for a three year term, we have Addie Seguin on the ballot. Lister for a one year term, we have no names on the ballot. Auditor for a three year term, we have Paul Tomasi on the ballot. Delinquent tax collector for a one year term, we have Emily Purdy on the ballot. Uh, first constable, we have no names on the ballot. Second constable for a one year term, we have Addie Seguin on the ballot. So those are the offices. Those are the terms and those are the names that are on the ballot. But like Peter said, um, candidates can also run as a write-in for any of those offices. Um, okay, thank you. Um, yes, I, Eileen. Yeah, um, just a, a point of information for um, thinking people who might be um, new to voting in town that if there is, let's say somebody's not on the ballot and there's no write-in for a position, am I um, correct in that then the select board might appoint someone in, into that role? Yeah. That is correct, yep. Or if there's nobody interested, it'll remain vacant until there's interest. Right. Uh, can I ask a question about write-ins? Yes. So let's say five people wrote in the same person. How many people need to be written in in order for them to be, um, you know, legitimately put in that office? Well, there's there's no illegitimate write-in uh, unless it's someone like Mickey Mouse, uh, and it would be a plurality. In other words, if there's two write-ins and one of the candidates has one write-in and the next one over has two write-ins, I would say that the one who got two was the winner. But so you could win that position by two write-ins. That's it. No, so a write-in vote, a, sorry. Yes. A write-in vote wins by um, 30 votes or 1% uh, of the checklist, whichever is less. Uh, that was my question. Yeah, how many how many people need to write that same person? Yeah, yeah okay. thirty votes or one percent of the checklist. Which in Wheelock, the one percent is less. Okay, thanks. It's like it comes out to like six or seven, I think. Okay, there you go. Okay. Uh. Traditionally, there's been a question when there are a couple of ca candidates in a contested election for the candidates to say a few words about perhaps introducing themselves to the, uh, the assembly or uh, 
just to say a, a couple of words on what, what they think they're going to be doing if they do get elected. Um, so uh, I think we can op open the uh, floor to that. Uh, do I see your hand, Ann? I was going to let you go first, Peter, because you're running for moderator. Uh, but or do well, you want to? We can I always mean... hope. We can always hope there's some write-ins. But, <laughs> but barring that, I guess uh, um, uh, I'll move on to uh, the next uh, office. Well, I'd be happy to say a couple of words. Thank you. Um, I've been on the select board since. I think December 2018, I filled out one of those, um, ex uh, I filled out someone's seat before they, they didn't fill out their full term. And then I was elected to my own full term and that has just ended. So my, my term is up and I would like to continue. It's a lot of work, but it's, um, I'm really, I'm really enjoying it. I like working with my two select board colleagues and very much with um, our town clerk, Vanessa Seguin, she's just doing a wonderful job. And I, I feel like we're getting a lot of stuff done and that that makes me happy. And we have a good, we're, we're working together really well. We don't always agree on everything, but we we're getting the work done. Um, one of my, one of the things I enjoy the most is, is doing grant writing. And so far we've been, we've been quite fortunate and I'll stop there. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay. I guess we'll move on to Mike then. Hi, uh, so I'm Mike Kirsten. Uh, I've been a couple months since I was filling in a vacancy on the select board. Um, I've been living in, I'm from Lindenville. I've been living in Wheelock for about 18 or 19 years on, up here on Center Mountain Road. Um, I have a wide variety of, you know, background and skills and know how to run heavy equipment and know how construction is done. Uh, I've worked with, you know, people, uh, directly, uh, in, in the field of, uh, social services, more or less. Um, uh, and I feel like I've. I do also get along with the other select board members and I'm just starting to understand the mechanics of, of, uh, of you know, running a town and, uh, uh, and I was, uh, shoveling out the, uh, parking lot so we can get the water out of the town hall hopefully the other day so uh, I feel like a uh, uh, pretty dedicated motivated uh, resident of town so that's about the sum of it right there okay thank you Mike and, did you hear that did that work uh, yeah. some of it was a little odd but uh, not Sorry, what you it's my said, first but how you <laughs> Okay, we can move down to Lister. Do, do you have anything, Addy, you want to say? I guess you have to, there we go. I'm unmuted, right? There you go. All right. I was just running for the Lister position because I was nominated by uh, last year by Mr. Blackbird who took his select board position. And uh, I took that uh, that uh, role this past year and uh, learned a lot and wanted to continue in and continue on that, uh, uh, that elected uh, position. 
furthermore and uh, learn and, you know, help out the town where I can. And uh, so that's why I'm running for through or year term. And I enjoy working with Carol. And I like to, uh, I like numbers and I like to interact with people. And, and I like to, you know, uh, learn a lot more about the actual uh, geographics of Wheelock by doing this position. So it's neat and it's uh, always a learning and a uh, new opportunity. So vote for me if you want. <laughs> Get out and do it yourself. <laughs> no. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Did Lori raise her hand? I was just saying hi. Oh, okay. I was just jumping on and saying hi. Okay, good. Thank you. Yep. Yes. Was that a hand there, Addie? You were just waving too. <laughs> oh, I was just saying hi too. Okay. Didn't look like anybody else was. Uh, this is a little weird, but I guess we'll get through it. Um, is, Paul isn't here, is he? Paul Tomasi? I don't think anybody else is here that is on okay. the ballot or running. Okay, I just wanted to give people an opportunity, that's all. Yep. Okay, uh, then uh, we'll move on. Bill of voters expel, approve expenditures in the amount of $139,584 for the general fund to meet the expenses and liabilities of the town for the ensuing year. Uh, is there any comment or questions of the uh, uh, select board about that? Yes, Eileen. I, I just want to express um, appreciation for how um, budgets have been presented in the town report this year. Um, I have a long career working in budgets. Uh, I've always been a little bit frustrated with trying to follow the town budgets, um, and it's just, just much clearer, and I appreciate it a great deal, and thank you. Um, Vanessa. Yep. Thanks. Good to hear. It's a little different this year. I did the financial reporting different, um, but I'm that? happy to answer any questions. You're, you're able to. Yeah. Well, we have one, one other auditor. My wife uh, also agrees and says that uh, the, the uh, Town report is, is very good this year and it's much easier to follow. I don't see any more hands, so we'll move on. Article three, shall the voters approve expenditures in the amount of $335,533 for the maintenance of its highways including summer roads, winter roads, and state aid resurfacing. And this, uh, this article uh, points to what Catherine was saying. Any further comments? Just a thumbs up from Catherine. I hope that's what that is. Okay. I didn't know if that was one of those star six things that you had to raise your hand or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> no, no hands. Okay. Uh, article four. Um, any comments on that? Peter, I think Eileen has a, a hand up. Okay, Eileen. Just a very quick comment, sorry. Uh, just massive appreciation for the grants that Ann Lawless has been able to write for our for our road work. Um, and I, I didn't want that to pass by without remarking on that. Thank you. 
Thank you, Eileen. Any further comments uh, specifically on uh, Article 4? Okay, let's move on to Article 4, uh, Article 5. Shall the town allow a grace period of 30 days after the established date for current tax payment during which the collector of delinquent taxes shall charge a 1% penalty instead of 7% on payments made in full pursuant to 32 BSA section 1674, 3 and B. I think you just combined four and five a little bit. Okay. Article four is shall we collect taxes um, on the first Friday of November um, and implement 1% um, per month of uh, interest and 7% of penalty, and then Article 5 is shall the delinquent tax collector allow a grace period. So they're kind of two different things. And I think you started reading four, but then bumped down to five. Um, so those are the two different articles. They have not changed in the past four years that I can tell. Same article. Um, so you just muted. If you're still talking, nope, nope. That's I just wanted to say that those are the same that they've always okay, been right. um, for the past, and um, that's it. I don't think there's any comments on that one. Uh, Linda, there's a any comment? I I thought I saw your hand. Okay. Nope. Thank you. Okay, Article 6, then, shall the voters of the town of Wheelock appropriate the sum of $7,000 to be added to the $26,400 already in the reserve fund under the control and direction of the select board for bridge repair, replacement, and or major road repair? Any comments on that one? This is Article 6. Yes. Um, mostly a, a, a comment on um, the articles, probably 6 through 13, 14. Um, I just think that they should be written as raise and appropriate sums. Um, and as long as we, you know, understand that as, as the meaning. It's hard to appropriate if you haven't raised the money. Uh, that probably does not pertain to this year, however. Uh, we're not allowed to change the, the uh, or modify uh, any of the articles. That's one of the problems of uh, uh, doing this uh, remotely. If we were in a regular meeting, I think we could probably uh, modify the original motion, but I don't think we can here, can we? I'm not trying to modify it. I'm just put, saying it as a point of order. I, I agree with you, Eileen. Next year. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to Article 7. So the voters of the town of Wheelock appropriate. Um, I'm as it's written, the sum of twenty-five thousand to be added to the one hundred and ten thousand six hundred and eight dollars already in the road equipment replacement fund to be used for the purchase of new equipment. Any comments on that? Yes. Actually, you know what? If I could bump back up to Article 6, I just wanted to point out that um, the bridge project that we did this fall in, um, where did we do it? South Wheelock? Yeah. Um, the town's share of that grant came out of that reserve fund. I just wanted people to know that. 
in case you were wondering. <laughs> I think you put that in your report, didn't you? I think so, but I just wanted to point it out again. I think I read it there. Very good. The grant was 175,000. I think Ann wrote the grant with the in, with um, the road crew, and then um, I think the town share ended up being, gosh, was it 50,000? Somewhere Something like that. Yeah. So anyway, just wanted to let you know that that's, that's kind of like an example of what would come out of that fund, you know, to pay for something like that. A town share of a grant would be a good, a good, um, a good use of that fund. Yep. Sounds good. I just looked it up. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to be recognized, Peter. I'm I sorry. saw you. I, then you started, so I said, fine. Um, the town's share was $53,793. And that's on page 19. Okay. Vanessa listed them all out, which was in notes, which is super helpful. Okay, any further comment there? Let's move to Article 8 then. So the voters of the town of Wheelock appropriate the sum of $30,000 to be added to the $46,030 already in the town hall project reserve fund to be used for major repair and rehabilitation work on the Wheelock town hall. Any comments? Okay, we'll move on to Article 9. Shall the voters of the town of Wheelock appropriate 16000 up to $16,500 towards the cost of professional services related to the development of construction documents in connection with fulfilling its obligation to the U.S. Department of Justice with respect to town hall accessibility issue as outlined in the settlement agreement. Uh, could the, uh, I, I have a question, could the select board clarify that? Why do we need that in uh, article as an article? Yes, Ann. You're muted. I'd be Thank happy you. to talk. I'd be happy to talk to that. Thank you. Um, we created a separate article for for the construction documents because we felt that even though we have article eight which is the town hall project reserve fund to be used for major repair and rehabilitation work we felt that it was necessary and a good idea to have a separate article for the construction documents and the main one of the main reasons for for having that separate article is just like um Vanessa mentioned in discussing the uh, the road, the bridge, the Article Six for bridge repairs and all of that um, bridge and road repair. Having that fund, having a set aside fund, is really useful because you can use it for for to match other grants. And that's the situation that that we're in now. We're hoping that we can raise another grant that would help with um you know continuing to move the project forward anyone else
Okay, Article 10, shall the voters of the town of Wheelock appropriate the sum of- Peter, I'm just gonna interrupt you. Uh, we have a raised hand by Catherine Coons. Yeah, oh. hi, I was just curious on, uh, and I appreciate everybody for taking, um, using your hard work um, and working for these endeavors, I think it's fantastic and highly commendable. Um, I just wanted to know um, how do you how do you rate the priorities of what's mo more important? Like, do you shift your article article spendings? Like uh, the town hall, you have a certain amount of money. Well, wh what what importance is there? An order of importance of things that should be done. For instance, if there's one item that really should be dealt with. Does some of the money go to that, that cause or is there a certain allotment for every article, which I'm assuming that's the case. But I'm just saying that I'm sure a lot of people feel that there's, that some of the money should be used. Like me personally, I think the roads are a big deal, you know. Um, and as far as making up the, the town hall, I, I don't know, you know, how, I mean, I think putting it up to code would be really important, but I don't think using, you know, a ton of money for a facelift is that important, but um, to me, but um, so I just wanted to know how that works. Um, I guess voting goes into um increasing the amount or taking money out does that happen I, i'm i'm not sure how the town politics work so if maybe ann you could help me out and just clarify yes ann thank you i'm willing to give it a shot um oh, i would say yeah. just yeah just briefly yeah to... i would say i would say that our priority work You'll see that in the road budget and the general fund budget. That's, those are the basic things. Those are like the bare bones things that are needed to run the town. And we need that budget to pass. We, you know, we always really want those budgets to pass because that's what pays our road crew and um, keeps the town, keeps the lights on in the town hall, things like that. And then we also have what I, I guess I would call them special projects. They're also very important. Um, and we, we develop these special articles um, for reserve, reserve fund articles. Some of these things are, they're more than you can get done in one year um, because we try to keep our the amount of that we have to raise in taxes kind of on an even keel because it helps our townspeople not have to endure you know major spikes and dips from one year to the to the next um but some things are kind of long term like for example you know if we have to buy a new a new truck you know um that's a huge expense and so we try to set aside money every year for when the time comes that we actually have to do it. So that's why we have reserve funds. It's so that the whole, the general fund and the road budget can go forward and then people can choose, vote up or down on the special reserve funds. That's kind of how I see it, but I'd love to hear from the other select board members too. Thank you, thank you. I, I'd like to comment on one aspect that you didn't talk about, and that is a budget process that's set up. And the select board, uh, uh, before town meeting and before now, has spent uh, many hours uh, coming up with a budget. And uh, of course, those are open meetings, and townspeople can come to those and put in their comments and uh, how they feel about certain projects. And uh, uh, the select board uh, can include. Uh, uh, some of that in in the uh, in the budgets, and then we we have our book our uh, town reports and uh, those those uh, appropriations are uh, are given in the articles. So that's 
another aspect of uh, of how that could be uh, uh, suggested priorities. So I don't. Do I, do I see anybody else? I'm sorry I missed you, Catherine, there with your hand up. I, I didn't see that. Okay. I, I just not just not used to it, that's all. <laughs> I guess we're on the Article 10 still. Are there further comments on that? That's the uh, one for Linden Rescue. So no, we're on Article 10. You haven't done that one yet. That's what I mean. We're still on it. Yeah, you haven't read it, though. Oh, I thought I did. Okay. Bill the voters of the town, town of Wheelock appropriate the sum of $33,293.20 for the operating expenses of Linden Rescue Incorporated. Okay, I don't see any hands. So move on to Article 11. So the voters of the town of Wheelock appropriate the sum of $31,375.84 for the operating expenses and equipment replacement fund of the Sheffield Wheelock Fire Department. Any comments there? Or questions. Their report is in the uh, is in the town report. I think we all want to give a uh, a thanks out to the fire department and uh, the hours that many of them put in. So, thank you. Any further comments? We'll move on to Article 12. Shall the voters of the town of Wheelock appropriate $31,443.96 for the town's share of transfer station expenses? Any comments there? I just wanted to point out that yes. that number can be um, found on page 16 for those of you who are not familiar with the town report. It breaks out um, the wages, wheelock share of the wages and other um, expenses related to that. So I just wanted to show you where you could find those numbers to equal that 31, um, page 16. And the same with the fire department too. So if you look at page 16, line 153 through 158 is the town share of our expenses for our employees at the transfer station. And then line 159 is our appropriation towards the whole, the whole organization. And the same with um, the fire department. Any further comments besides what my dog is saying? <laughs> okay, now we'll move to Article 13. Um, and I'll read this. Shall the voters of the town of Wheelock appropriate $4,607 to support the following organizations, Caledonia Home Health, Care and Hospice, 300, Darling Inn Senior Meal Site, $300, 
Hope, $500. Northeast Kingdom Human Services, $1,622. Umbrella, $600. Who could go lie down? Rural Community Transportation, $300. Northeast Kingdom Council on Aging, $300. Vermont Center for Independent Living, $85. Northeast Kingdom Learning Services, $100. Community Restorative Justice Center, $250. And Northeast Kingdom Youth Services, $250. Any comments on that? I guess I have a comment uh, or a question. What happens if this article is uh, voted down? Are all the uh, appropriation requests also voted down? Yes, except 14 and 15 are separate articles. Right, I see that, but. But yeah. Yep, if it if it's a no across the board, then it's a no for all items. And you can do that. You can break them out or you can group them together. They can be grouped together as a sum. You mean when the uh, uh, when the articles are uh, put together, they can be broken up. Article 13, if it gets voted down, none of those will be paid. Okay. Okay, any further comments on that? Yeah. Eileen, did you have something? Okay, it just automatically went unmuted and I thought you were going to say something. Linda, did you have something? And you have to unmute. Thank you. Oh. There we go. Oh. It, it unmutes for a second and then it goes back to muting. Now you're good. Okay, uh, I just wanted to let people know that um, I'm here because i am uh, lived in Wheelock for more than 30 years now, uh, but I'm also here because I'm a board member of uh, Northeast Kingdom Human Services, and I just thought I'd let you know that, and that the figure that is used comes from, and from two, representing $2, for each person that lives in the town of Wheelock. NKHS covers uh, the, three, the whole Northeast Kingdom, which is the size of Rhode Island. And that same figure, that same amount for population is used in all of the, all of the little towns. Any questions? Okay, thank you for my little bit of time there. Sure, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Okay, let's move on. Article 14, show the voters of the town of Wheelock appropriate $250 to Kingdom Animal Shelter for no-kill animal shelter services. And this is, uh, uh, once again, I want to point out, this is for uh, the cat shelter, the kitty cats. Yes, Eileen. It's my understanding that because that this is broken out, and I'm, I'm looking for correction if I'm not right, it's broken out into a separate article because it's not considered like a social service. I'm, is, is that a correct impression? 
Yes, Anne. I believe that's the reason why it's broken out. And our, we have a policy that defines what what is an, an agency that, you know, helps a helpful agency like that. Um, the title of the the title of the policy isn't as broad as what's in the text of the policy. So I think people were going by what's in the what's in the title rather than the text. But it's probably not that big a deal. <laughs> in other words, their criteria don't fit the criteria or their arrangement does not fit the criteria that would normally go in the uh, Article 13 uh, appropriations. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Well, it's kind of a mixed bag because um, I forget, I, I can't remember, maybe Jim, you remember whether we voted to add them or not when we were in our budget deliberations? I can't, I can't remember, but the policy is, is actually, it's posted on our, on our website if anybody wants to look it up. Do you remember, Jim? Remember. Sorry, you were muted. No, Ian, I don't remember. No, I don't remember either. I remember talking about it, but I don't really remember how we acted on it. I guess we decided to keep it separate. No, <laughs> we must have. Somebody explained it last year, and I don't remember. Or maybe it was the year before. <laughs> yeah, I remember a couple of years ago at town meeting, Carol explaining why they were broken out. Um, but uh, I guess they didn't fit the bill for a social service agency, but that is a policy of the board. So it could be changed. It could be changed. The only difference is that they were, they, that they had to submit a petition to be on the warning, and they did, and it was um, valid, so they're on there. Good. I'm just looking up the policy on the website right now, and the title of the policy is Social Service Agency Appropriation Policy, um, but it says in the details, such programs include, but are not limited to transportation, nutrition, medical, daycare, and other rehabilitative services, persons with low incomes, senior citizens, children, disabled persons, drug and alcohol, and persons requiring employment to eliminate their need for public assistance. It actually doesn't say anything about pets. So. <laughs> well, certainly cats are uh, a, uh, a comfort to a lot of people. Any further comments there on uh, that article? I don't see any. So we'll move on to Article 15. Shall the town of Wheelock hold a vote by Australian ballot on or before November 8, 2022? to adopt flood hazard regulations adequate to meet the qualifications for acceptance into the National Flood Insurance Program with a public hearing on the subject held not less than 30 days prior to the date of the vote. Yes, Anne. I'd be happy to explain how this article came to be on our warning. It was submitted by a petition and a petition has to have a certain number of signatures on it. And when it's an okay petition and our clerk verifies that the select board is obligated to put it on the, on the meeting warning. Um, but that doesn't have anything to do with whether it's a good action or a bad action that's being proposed in the article. But there are some good reasons why a town um, might choose to um, to apply to be in the National Flood Insurance Program. One reason is because people in the town can get flood insurance, whereas 
um, in, in that program. Now people cannot do that because the town does not belong to it. Um, I think a big one is if a person wants to buy a home and they're, they're, they have federal funding somehow in their, um, they're using federal funding in their, in their ability to purchase, it's a, it's a requirement. And a third reason is that it gives the town the ability to get a higher percentage of funding from the state in the event of a federally declared disaster. It's like a, there's a score. And if you belong to the flood insurance and you have this and you have this and you have that, then you get the, you can get a higher score, a higher percentage. And there's a fourth reason, but I can't remember what it is at the moment. Yes, Linda, I see your hand. I just have a little information and I can't remember whether I got it online or I got it from the tele television or I read an article somewhere, but it was very recent about uh, the, the number of towns and the, uh, the same kind of uh, qualifications that uh, Anne mentioned, but it was way o over the majority of towns in the state of Vermont that do have the flood insurance. That was my understanding. That's what was my takeaway. Thank you. Yes, Ann. I think that's true. You can go on. There's a, there's a, a state website called Flood Ready Vermont, and you can look up you can look up every, you can look up, you can look up by county, you can look up the name of a town and you can find out what, what, which one of these various things it has that help us, that help a town get a higher, it's called the ERAF score, E-R-A-F, but I can't remember what the letters stand for, I'm sorry, but there's a lot on Flood Ready Vermont. Okay, uh, anyone else? Okay, the following articles are non-binding, advisory only, to meet the requirements of the settlement agreement with the U.S. Department of Justice. Their purpose is for the voters to express their preference for one of the two proposed design options. Um, more information I notice is on page 40 of our uh, town report. And I'll, I'll start with Article 16. Given that the town of Wheelock must address accessibility and code compliant issues for the town hall, does the town prefer the board move forward with the design option one? It is a two story, 20 by 30 square foot addition. 1,200 square foot total for the rear of the town hall. Accessible restrooms on the lower level, non-commercial kitchen on the upper level. Lift to meet accessibility requirements. Walkways to meet accessible entry requirements. Replacement of front steps. Electrical upgrade. Estimated total cost $980,000 and $90. 980 and $90. Yep. Any comments on that? Yes. I just wanted to point out, you know, again, that these are non-binding articles. These are the kind of articles that we would discuss at the end of a town meeting under other business. Um, this is not a bond vote. We are not voting to spend money, even though there's an estimated project total cost in there. This is not a bond vote. And I just wanted to put that out there so that people are aware of that. Yes, Eileen. 
I would also like to point out that um, the grant climate that we're in now, uh, I would not have dreamed about this three or four years ago, considering the town hall accessibility issues. And it's even much better. I've been working on town hall accessibility since 2005, and several people on this call are also uh, members of that early committee. And the, the grant uh, constellation, if you will, and opportunities for us are, are really excellent to do the project now, which is great because frankly, no is not an answer. We are under an agreement with the Department of Justice to finally do the right thing and have our town hall accessible. Thank you. So once again, I'll refer you to uh, page 40 in uh, the town report uh, for further information. Further comment? I don't see any. So I'll move on to Article 17. Given that the town Wheelock must address credibility and code compliance issues for the town hall, does the town prefer the board move forward with design option two? It is a one story, 37 by 43 square foot side addition, 1591 square feet to accommodate all building functions on a single level, except for the mechanicals, no lift needed. Accessible restrooms, non-commercial kitchen, combination walkway and ramp to meet accessible entry requirements, heating and electrical system improvements, estimated total $1,515,400. Any comments on that? Yes. I'm just, I was wondering if the board could speak to what the plans are when they draw conclusions from these two votes. Um, uh, say option 16 gets more votes than option 17. Could you just tell me where this is going? Like what is the board proposed to to um, go to the select board with and ultimately respond to the D Department of Justice with? What type of response? Um, are you gonna tell them that the town favors this option or are you gonna tell them that they're going to explore this option? I mean, I'm just curious to know what direction we're going with it once, you know, after election night. Yes, Anne. I guess you need to unmute. We're not hearing you. Speaking speaking as your as your current chair, I can say that when um, the US Department of Justice in the settlement agreement asked the select board to make a choice on um, which option to proceed with. Well, wait a minute, we didn't know. I'm sorry, take that back. We didn't have they didn't know that we were going to have two options. We developed two options because we had the planning grant that enabled us to do that. And we thought it would be better to give the voters a choice. In the when we reported back to the Department of Justice, which we did at the end of at the end of December on, on schedule, there's a time frame. We we said we've prepared these two options and the select board has decided to bring the choice to the voters. So at the end of March, that's the next time, time point at which we are supposed to report back to the US Department of Justice and let them know what the select board has chosen. So I would think that, um, you know, at the first, meeting after 
after at the first select board meeting after town meeting is on i think it's march it's it march 8th or maybe it's march 7th or it's, i think it's the 8th that'll be that that will be on the agenda um and then i could so you know we don't know what's going to happen we don't know what we will decide because we don't have the information to make a decision yet until then um but then moving forward and looking at the other deadlines that are in the settlement agreement the next thing that we're supposed to do is create construction documents once we've chosen which plan we want to go forward with and uh, i think we're supposed to do that it's in it's uh it's in here um yeah it's in the project committee report we're supposed to we create the construction bid documents by August 31st of this year. Uh, that's pretty soon. <laughs> um, and then by December 5th, according to this agreement, we're supposed to propose a bond vote for project funding. And um, frankly, I think we're going to have to have a really um, frank discussion with the, with the Department of Justice because you know, let's say that Article sixteen thousand five passes, and we have sixteen thousand five to go towards construction documents. Um, it's not going to get us very far. So we might have to make the schedule. We might have to ask the Department of Justice if they're willing to give us a little more time. I mean, we we sent them. The select board discussed the report that we sent them in December and you know we agreed to send it and it basically told them look we've been working we've been working really hard and they they appreciated that and you can see that on page 40 i put in i put in their comment when they received the when they received the report in December so I don't know how much. I mean, I can I can go on and on. Maybe I've gone on enough. Yeah. Yeah, Vanessa. I just have a follow up question. Um, if the majority of Article sixteen and seventeen are no votes, are no's, what's the plan? You start over. Because I think to me the intent, if those both of those votes are no both 16 and 17, if the majority is no, I think the intent is clear that these two plans are not the plans that the townspeople want to see. So where where do we go from there? I agree with you. Peter? Yes, go ahead, Jim. If they're both voted down, we're going to start over again. From zero. Correct, Dan. And you're. And you're I, I don't. I don't. I don't see what choice we would have other right. than that. Right. And what plan we come up with is probably going to have to meet what the Department of Justice. Um, it's going to have to meet their standards. But Correct. I don't. I don't disagree with you, Jim. I don't disagree with you one bit. <laughs> well. We'll start over again, but we'll try to use a little common sense instead of being so grand. There's no point at all in spending over $900,000, no matter which plan you go with. And I don't want to go any farther. Thank you. Yes, Eileen. I think that if the voters um, are no on both designs, that's going to have to be a discussion with the Department of Justice. Um, I don't think any of us here on this call or the select board can anticipate how that will, will be received. Yes, we can. And then the other follow-up question I had to that is if one of them is favorable, and we, you know, in the alternative, 
16 or 17 is favorable. How, I don't know what the word is. How strict is that? Is that, is that, is that the plan and we're going for it? Or just, are we going to have further community meetings or can we, can we knock down these plans? Can we make them smaller? Can we say of this plan, what is it? Of this option one, we'd like to take this, this, and this out. And then where do we stand? Because maybe it is a little too pricey or maybe it is a little too um, campus like for us, you know, can that, can that happen? Do you foresee that happening? Do you foresee more community input to, to change option one to better fit what maybe the community is looking for? Yes, Ann. I think community input is really important. And one of the reasons why I mean, we were lucky to get the planning grant that we got, but one of the reasons why we liked the planning grant was because there was a community outreach component. And I mean, you can never do too much community outreach. You right. just can't. You can just but do how it much and, community outreach did you get after the plans were in place and, and out there? And what kind of feedback did you get then? Was it well, were the, was the community receptive to your plan? You didn't. Uh, well, we got. We did. We had the community meeting outside. Right. I mean, after the plans have been produced, and I mean, the community meeting was kind of when they were introduced to the community. Nobody had really looked at them. Nobody had, you know, it was when they, it was right when they came out. Right. The community meeting was right when the plans were produced. But now that people have had time to look at them, they've been on display in my office. I mean, just from what I hear sitting here, there's a lot of questions. People have a lot of questions about these plans and, and they see the, how, mu how much community outreach have you done since the plans have been produced? And have, has the community been receptive to, that, to the plans? Yes, Ann. We haven't, if I could speak as the, as the, um, from the point of view of the project, the accessibility project committee, we have not done any more community outreach since the September 27th meeting, other than doing this mailer. And the reason, we, it costs money to do all those things. Mm -hmm. And we, we're, we've been spending grant money, we haven't been spending town money. So if we wanted to continue having community engagement, which I think would be very valuable and important and useful, then we would have to figure out how we would, you know, how to do it. Which yeah, but I disagree, I, and I, I don't I, think it, go ahead. I think that's, no, I think, I think that would be a good next step and I think it's doable, but I just like to answer your other question, which is how much feedback did we get? Cause we had a two week comment period after the community meeting and we did get a lot of comments. And they were, we got some really, really thoughtful comments. Um, I mean, we had the collection boxes where people could write their comments and leave them at the, in the box at the store and at, um, I guess, where was it? At, at, the, at the town hall, I think. Um, and people could comment online. And I think 18 people commented. Um, we we basically used up all the grant money, which is why we didn't do any more other than other than that. But I would think that if one of these proposals has any life, the first thing to do would be to go back and look at all those comments and look at you know all the other feedback that we've had since then, which would include this you know, this discussion is really helpful and also um, the town meeting vote, obviously, even if it's a non-binding vote, it's mm -hmm. really important. It is important. And um, I just, you know, I don't think it costs money to get community outreach. I really don't have a meeting. I don't think it costs money. I mean, sending mailers, surveys, I think that costs money. I don't doubt that for a minute. But getting your community involved by having meetings about these two concepts, 
doesn't cost money. It costs time. And I think the perception that I've been getting just from being in the clerk's office is people have questions about these plans, more questions now that we're up for a vote than ever, I think. Mm -hmm. And there hasn't been any follow-up since September. And now all of a sudden, these two articles are on the warning and people are like, "Ah, what do we do besides ask questions and get no answers? And I think people are panicking a little bit, or that's just the, that's just the perception I get. Um, because I think I have a lot, I see a lot of people in the office. And so, um, I'm just wondering, you know, I just want to know that these aren't these, if we pick option 16, we've got to be able to tweak it to what the people want. And I, I just want to make sure that that's an opportunity. We're going to have an opportunity or for example, article, I think option two has a, an extension of the stage. Well, are we going to let people say, no, we don't really need an extension of our stage upstairs. Could we take that out of the plans? I just want to make sure we're going to have that opportunity to do that. And you had your hand raised. I would think that we would want to take all the opportunities we can. And, you know, to, to have more discussions and um, get get more people involved in the process. I, I think it's I think it's essential. I just feel like the board has not really given that a clear message to the people that you know these are just de- design concepts. They're not they're not they're fluid. But I feel yeah. like that that isn't the message that's being sent, and people are a little panicky. That's all. Your feedback is really is is really helpful, Vanessa. Thank you. And I I I mean, we've done we've we've tried as hard as we could to make our meetings accessible and welcoming by you know posting the minutes and posting the um, agendas and stuff. But I know that's not you know if you're not already interested in it, you might not you might not want to join but we would we've we've always wanted to have a really broad um cross-section of people involved in in the in the work have you guys been open to other design concepts than these two i think if anyone brought us one i think i think we would be but no one has brought us one that I that I that I'm aware of, because I read in your minutes that you guys were opposed to an option three. It just wasn't an option. The board as a whole, the committee as a whole, was opposed to another option C, and they were also opposed to an addition on the building that was separate from this building, um, because it was, uh, I think it said tacky. <laughs> I think that's what the minutes said. Um, So I've read in your minutes that you are opposed to an option three and you're not, the committee is opposed to developing an option. Opposed. The committee. Committee. I can pull up the minutes. Well, I don't know what minutes they are. It was a little while, it was over the summer, but I know that I've read in your minutes that you are opposed to an option three at this point in time. I, I can I clarify something? Yeah, Eileen. Yes. Yeah. The, for meeting the requirements of the DOJ decision that there's at least a concept that the town, the voters are approving and want to step forward and further refine and I'd also like to say, once you have construction documents, you can refine it to and do what's called value engineering, which is a nice way of saying you, you bring down the cost of it. Um, we did receive a lot of good comments, community comments, that we could not incorporate at the time because we ran out of money to plan it. Those are still on, they're still on the shelf. But when we were hearing for this vote, 
that there needed to be an option three, and I think there's a misunderstanding here, is that in the time allowed, we did not have three options to present to voters. The committee definitely sees a third option coming out of the decision of the voters and further refinement of whatever option is chosen, that that's only a design concept, that it needs absolutely does need further refinement um, and cost savings can be gained in that refinement and grant opportunities, like I said earlier, are quite exceptional right now for th just this type of work. This is good to bring these points out now. Does anyone else have anything they want to want to help us with? Yes, Ann. Just really yes. quickly, Vanessa, if I if I could. When back you you were mentioning in the summer. We knew that we didn't have the money to have the architects develop three plans because that's really expensive. So we just went with the top two concepts that emerged out of the survey that we did. Yes, Eileen. I would also like to mention that COVID has been a very big handicap mm -hmm. on getting community um, meetings, buy-in, and conversation about this project. It has felt very constrained because of COVID. Have the meeting that we had in September, we had to have it out of doors under a tent. So. I am definitely looking forward to opportunities with COVID behind us where we can meet in town hall and have face-to-face -face discussions for the, the next generation, if you will, of a town hall plan. Um, I, thank you, Eileen. It just made me think of something that, um, and I'm not trying to uh, predispose uh, could you go get my charger? I'm getting a signal that I'm running out of battery. It's, it's plugged in, yeah, in there. Um, I think in, in, in assuming for a second that we'll get two no votes, and I'm not trying to say that that's mm -hmm. going to happen, but if it does, perhaps the point that Eileen just mentioned would be a really good argument to discuss with the Department of Justice uh, in asking for a deferral or uh, a bit more time. Um, so I'd suggest that uh, that, that be included in whatever communication uh, is, is brought with the Department of Justice. I hope this is the right one. Yeah, that worked. Okay. Got my tank full of gas again. Any further comments? Not speaking as a moderator, but as speaking as someone who was on probably the first committee that we ever had to discuss, and I'm talking maybe 20 years ago, there's a hidden cost in all these deferrals that we have 
And that is, I swore I would never be on that committee. I think it, it wears people out, it tires them out, and they say, the heck with it. I'm, I don't care what happens. I'm not going to be involved with the being on the committee. And that's what I said, and I will say it again. It, that's one of the hidden costs. You run through people. So I'm just saying that. However the vote goes, great. Thank you very much, ladies, for being on the committee and being able to respond uh, in whatever way that you have. Yes, Vanessa. And I don't doubt for a minute that the work hasn't been put in. I know that you guys work really hard for this. I'm just trying to be the voice of the people that I hear every day in the office. That's all. Just asking the questions. Because it doesn't seem like there's enough people doing that. So that's all. I don't doubt that there's hard work in that. I know there is. And I know it's been put in for sure. It's awful easy to be negative and to make negative comments and leave it at that. But to be a person that is actually involved with coming up with something. That's that's what's hard. We would love to have more people join join the committee. They're always welcome. We're always trying to find more people. Don't call me. Share the load. <laughs> okay, Peter. Any further comments? Is there anything else we've got to do at our meeting tonight? I guess I better flip the page. Um, do I need to read this stuff about I the signatures? Just, I think we just need to have a motion to adjourn. So moved. And seconded. Do you have a comment, Linda? You're seconding. Okay, thank you. Any for any discussion on that? Hearing none, uh, let's have a vote. All those in favor, please say aye or raise your hand or do something. Opposed, say nay or raise your hand. Thank you, Lori. Okay, motion carries. Thank you very much, folks. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night.